Have you ever wanted to go back in time? Of course you have. We all have. Who wouldn't want to go back and relive an event from our past, change something that went wrong, or just get rich? Time travel is a staple of science fiction. It's a wonderful plot element to correct errors in the past. Star Trek, Star Wars, Stargate, and Battlestar Galactica all have made use of time travel, some more than others. While causality loops, alternate timelines, or multiverses are currently very popular in science fiction, I'm gonna take us in a different direction. I have a personal and technical grudge with Hollywood slash fictional depiction of time travel, especially those that center around planet Earth. Most uses of time travel just treat time as a dimension you can travel forward and backward, as if it was a road in the desert, disappearing into the distant horizon in both directions. Some of you may already know what I'm leading to, but let me explain. In The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, a time traveler, referred to as the time traveler in the novel, goes into the future observing things moving in quick motion around him. He sees his house disappear and turn into a lush garden. How can the traveler observe his surroundings if he's traveling in time? H.G. Wells took the earth as static. Even though he knew that the Earth traveled around the Sun when the story was published in 1895. The Earth is never in the same place at different times. The Earth spins on its axis. The Earth also moves in its orbit around the Sun. The Sun circles the center of the Milky Way galaxy in a complex path, not only around the center, but oscillates in and out of the disk. On top of that, the Milky Way galaxy is traveling towards a point in the universe called the Great Attractor at 447 kilometers a second. If you left today and traveled into the future or past, where will the Earth be? The Sun? Here or here or here or what about here? It takes the Sun 250 million years to go around the center of the galaxy. Oh, and in my little animation, I didn't even take into account the motion of the entire galaxy itself. See how confusing and silly this can get really fast. Back to the book. The time traveler should have seen the Earth disappear into the distance. So this type of time machine should not be viable. He wasn't protected from the vacuum of space and would have died when he came to a stop. What time machine could someone use to travel to any point in time? Before I give you my answer, let's go over the other time machine mechanisms used in sci-fi. First, let's discuss wormholes. From a general relativistic point of view, these are plausible, but lead to violations of causality. Not 100% convinced, so let me explain. If you're gonna use wormholes as a time machine, there are three things you have to take into account. One, you can't go back in time before the wormhole is created. Two, one end of the wormhole needs to experience time dilation and progress forward in time at a different rate, either by being placed near a black hole or through acceleration close to the speed of light. Three, once you pick a point in time in the future to come to rest relative to something, say, a planet, the two ends of the wormhole will progress forward in time, normally through their respective world lines. So in other words, you make a wormhole, get one of the openings to be a thousand years in the future, and that's as far as you can go. You can go back and forth a thousand years. If you wait one year to go through the wormhole, you'll still end up 1,000 years in the future from when you left. You can't get off, let's say, 500 years from now. So that's not a common time travel trope. There have been a few sci-fi stories where people can only travel back X number of days to avert a disaster. Seven days is such a show. Other shows like Stargate are able to make time travel wormholes from a specific point back to the same Stargate at a different point in time. The Stargate system in the show is able to take into account stellar drift. 
So the position of the Stargate isn't a big deal in that universe. Star Trek in the original movies used the solar slingshot maneuver to travel back and forward in time. Not sure how the position of the sun isn't affected, but that wasn't obviously addressed. Now we're up to Voyager. In Star Trek Voyager, the ship runs into a future time ship which can open rifts in space time. It was sent back to correct a disaster in the 29th century. That's the episode where the crew traveled back to the late 20th century, the time period the show was being filmed in. Battlestar Galactic in the 1980s series utilized a time warp synthesizer built into a colonial viper developed by the character Dr. Z. That's the episode where Commander Xavier travels back in time to give Nazi Germany colonial technology to speed up Earth's technological development. So where does that leave us? I said earlier that I have the perfect sci-fi time machine that can take you anywhere and our friends at the BBC have given it to us. The TARDIS, time and relative dimension in space. The London police box that has captivated audiences since 1963. It's a spacecraft that can travel through time as well as space, which is what you need if your destination is hurtling through space. From the console, you set a time-space coordinate and off you go. I do have to confess that I don't know what coordinate system the Gallifreyans used, but that's a sci-fi show, so let's continue. Doctor Who always makes a point to never travel back to the same place twice. Well, he actually does, but only to meet different incarnations of himself, mostly past selves played by prior actors of the role. In the episode Father's Day, Rose goes back twice to the same day her father dies and on the second trip saves him and breaks the timeline. A lot of universe ending events begin to occur until the timeline is restored. Time machines are a very fun and I believe overly used plot device in most science fiction stories that utilize them. It just makes it too easy to just correct any bad event in your storyline. Why struggle to overcome a disaster if it's easier to go back and prevent it anyway? That's what the show Seven Days was all about avoiding the bad event in the first place. Are there other aspects of sci-fi that could be investigated? Of course there are. Faster than life travel has a multitude of mechanisms to go over. Warping of space-time, wormholes, again. Traversing higher order dimensions, the list goes on. I hope you enjoyed our little trip through time travel and science fiction and your liberties taken to ignore obvious or not so obvious plot holes. I hope you like and subscribe if you find this enjoyable, and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.